Hello and welcome to a special presentation of In The Money Media. This is our Race Lend, Race Lend, Race Lens Santa Anita Breeders' Cup preview show. We're going to be looking at some stats and some trends around Santa Anita. This show is brought to you by Race Lens, and I have to let you know about a fantastic offer going on right now. You have an opportunity to get a year of Race Lens at a heavily, heavily discounted price. And with that, you get a year of In the Money Plus. That's going to include all of our Paywall Breeders' Cup stuff, obviously the Derby coverage next year that's extra, but also week by week, we've got extra podcasts, extra analysis, uh, p- grid, grid picks from all the different shows across the network. Um, folks love In the Money Plus, and this is a chance to get it and a great data source in this Race Lens program, all for one low price. Learn more in the money podcast.com slash race lens ptf here at beautiful santa anita and very happy to be joined by race lens power user and general friend of in the money media matt vag volgi matt how are things good pete it's uh breeders cup week i'm excited to uh i'm excited to get going uh, i gotta do about a week's worth of work so i can get some time off uh, towards the end of the week but uh no the, the the fun part has started you know with the final pps out for both friday and saturday a lot of the modeling stuff i do those files are final i kind of start drawing everything in together and then start to take a look at um you know some ideas and put some bets together for uh, friday and saturday and that's exactly the point we're at for this show we're going to look at some of the trends some of the things you found that are going to help us you know we'll give some specific thoughts maybe on what these things, how they inform our handicapping opinions of both Friday and Saturday. But of course, we're also just demoing the power of the race lens tool. I mean, people talk so much about CAW players and, and you know, I think in a, in a subtle way, race lens gives you an opportunity to do some of the things that, that those players do in a way that you can easily combine with whatever your typical data sources are. It's not a, oh, throw everything out, come here and look at race lens. It's very much of a complementary piece and that's what we're going to be demonstrating throughout the course of this show. And with that in mind, let's just get to our first point. Uh, Matt, I'll let you guide us where we're going to go, and, and we'll share your screen here. Yeah, and, and to that point, I mean, this is where I like to start, right? It's, I think it's a good example of how I like to kind of begin looking at races, especially for Breeders' Cup when you have kind of a, a lot of time to, to look and, and to get familiar with it, is to take broader views, right? I want to take a look as broad as I can when it comes to different pace scenarios, different distances, you know, that that sort of thing. And that's, again, what you can do with race lines, right? And I think that's important that you don't have to have a modeling background, like I mentioned the last time we were on, Pete. Once you get the hang of it, once you get used to it, it's very easy to filter through and to build these angles and to build this research and then start to drill down even further. So um, what I'll do quickly is just to kind of give you an idea of, so I'm, I'm going to use some, you know, some some broader pace angles, like I mentioned, but just to give you an idea of, you know, if I go over to, to, to manage the angle side of it, I want to give you an idea of like how that populates, but when you're creating a new angle, right? This is what that screen is going to look like. And it's pretty simple, right? So just to kind of give you an idea of how simple it is, if I want to put in the track, we enter it here. If I want to do the surface, right? Right here, just simple click what surface I want to do. Um, you know, if I want to do the, the, the distance, you can do it exact. Here's a point that I want to make for the Breeders Cup. I make angles, broad angles when it comes to early pace, late pace, with specific distances, because I want to look at that specific distance to see what I'm looking at, how it applies to uh, to the races we're going to have at, at Breeders' Cup. So I just want to give a, a little bit of a, of a tour, so to speak, of that, just to show you how easy it is to kind of select and, and, and click around uh, to make these different angles. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll kind of give it, give an idea on, on a broader sense of looking at some different pace. And we'll start, we'll start on the dirt. Um, I would say in general, what I've seen so far, given the current meet, also bringing in the last meet uh, from Santa Anita. And then again, going out further for, for, you know, five years is the max we can go back to look. Uh, late pace seems to be pretty dominant when you look at, when you look at the dirt. Um, now it changes a bit with, with sprints, but I'm going to give another reason why I like to use stats or I use race lines to, to like, to look through this and say, is that, statistic current or is that something that's trending in a different way right so we'll, we'll, we'll get to that point there but we'll start with we'll start with the mile and we'll look at we're looking at saturday as as the example here and you know looking at it from a perspective uh, on on the late pace side of it 
And if you look at one mile on the dirt at, at Santa Anita specifically, if you look at the top late pace in the race, you know, over the last year, 121 races, uh, 32% winners with uh, 79, 79% of them hitting the board in the money in a flat ROI, right? So what that means is, yes, it's being better a little bit, but it's, but it's not, it's not crazy. It's not something that it's got a big negative ROI where, you know, the public is pretty easily onto this. So yeah. I, I get well, that's I think what I was going to say, Matt, just to, to just to interrupt, just to interrupt for a second. And this is to me just such a good underline of the value of the tool. I think precisely because it's a little bit counterintuitive, people think Santa Anita, they think speed. And so, we, but here by actually looking into the numbers, you can see that, you know, not discounting the importance of speed, but this idea of late pace an idea that we've talked about so much on our airwaves actually ends up being uh, underrepresented in terms of the market. And, that, and, you know, knowing that definitively and then being able to have a program that will serve you up, okay, here are the late pace horses. I mean, that's just, you know, that might be worth your, your subscription right there. Yeah, exactly. That's why I like to start as broad as I can and try to bring it down to the to the exact distance. And again, if you look at it more of in its recency, so okay, let's that's over a year. Let's look at the current, let's look at the current meet, what's happening at Santa Anita, it gets better, right? So there's been 20 races, 40% of them have been winners, 75% in the money and a and a plus 35% ROI. So it's something that not only I think is positive with a log with a larger subset, but it's also something that's that's in form uh, when you look at the current meet here at, at Santa Anita. And again, not to, uh, you know, to, 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 to look at, you know, uh, short price horses or horses that seem to be somewhat on, on the obvious side, but that hits Cody's wish right between the eyes. Right. So an easy way to do it is when you take that angle in that broader angle and say, okay, which horse meets that criteria. Right. So again, you'll see this populate here and you'll see that jumps up right, right there. So in that green angle is going to give you exactly what you're looking for. It's going to give you the success score again, that flat ROI there of zero. But again, easy way to look to kind of cross-reference it is right here in the corner, we've got the, the, the pace, the early, the middle, and the late pace. And that is a monster late pace figure, right? So, you know, my worry is a little bit further off the pace, but again, I think Cody's wish will be in a, in a spot where, again, this is a horse I came in for thinking I was going to be against like I was uh, last time out, but uh, I think might get the trip. Uh, it's got a got a jockey in, uh, in in Alvarado that is certainly uh, certainly feeling confident. So um, again, just kind of bringing in a, a broader base pace angle to bring it into a race here, uh, hitting Cody's wish pretty good with that late pace uh, late pace number from uh, from uh, a mile on the dirt. Great place to start because yeah, this is a horse. I think a lot of horse players are going to be looking to potentially beat. Maybe one that you can rely on a little bit more if you want to look at the if you want to look at, at it in those terms. Where shall we go next? So let's take a look, we'll stay in the dirt. We'll go to seven furlongs, right? So I wanted to look again at the, at the same idea and um, you know, what, what we'll do here for, we'll go to uh, race number five. And uh, again, looking at specific distances, especially when you get to that, I think seven furlongs being a tricky distance, especially when you're looking at, you're looking at pace, you're looking at speed figures. You know, every track seems to be different, obviously, in terms of the the uh, uh, you know the build of the track too can certainly can certainly change that. But I wanted to look I wanted to look here and to see you know anything standing out, whether it's early or late. And again, that late pace figure really standing out here at seven furlongs uh, as well. Um, over the last year, 31% winners, 71% uh, in the money. Now a negative 10% ROI, right? So a little bit of the, of the public getting on, but that's still okay with me, right? That still gives me a really good idea that horse is coming from off the pace, even at seven furlongs uh, makes, makes a lot of sense. And, you know, again, looking at Goodnight Olive, this is a horse that's going to fit that profile as well. What I like to see is the progression here, right? From Goodnight Olive. And this is a horse, again, I want to see if I can beat but this is a horse I probably I'm going to be leaning on in in the Breeders' Cup betting challenge. Um, this a, this is a good race to talk about. This is a good race to talk about pace generally because whereas almost every Breeders' Cup race to me this year on paper seems to have pace, the Finmare Sprint really doesn't. And with, with that in mind, I've been leaning. I mean, obviously, Goodnight Olive, you know, not only can win but should win. But I'm not uh, really uh, thinking that the society isn't going to have a big pace advantage in here. And this might be a cold chalk exacta, honestly. I mean, I feel like they, they lay over on figures and, you know, the, the, if society really is able to go out there and do her own thing on the, uh, on the, on the front end and, you know, good night, Olive in the lane is going to catch her or not. But I think that's going to be your exacta here. 
Yeah, no, I, I agree. And and again, when you look at it from that pace perspective, I kind of take that broader idea in and, and I, I love this pace progression as we see this, you know, we look at good night all of just, again, I, I thought ran just an unbelievable race uh, last time out. I mean, I think I was with you, Pete, actually at uh, Saratoga for it. Yep. Um, but uh, again, just showing that the ability to be, to be into the race early and, and also to finish, I think is huge. And again, certainly going to be a, a short price. I, I think your idea is right on when you, when you look at the exact side of things. What I wanted to add here as well, and this is an interesting additional feature when you look at race lens, is this tab up here, which is their GPS data, right? So if I could click on this GPS data, what it's going to do, it's going to bring in a whole nother subset of statistics that are, are exclusive to this, where you can then go through each one of these horses here and to say, okay, you know, look at average speed, you know, miles per hour, numbers of strides, cumulative strides. So all this different additional data coming in. And the reason I bring this up, you can actually run angles that include this data as well. Right. So you can take in all of that's the pace cool. data, uh, speed figures, all that. And and I, I ran one for seven furlongs, the top late pace, but also the top average miles per hour run in the race. It has an early running style, right? Like Goodnight Olive has. And again, over a large subset. So bringing in a large subset of horses. This is a broader angle, not just specific to Santa Anita, but broader over 3000 races hitting at 37 percent. Um, and 66% of that in the money and a minus four or 4% ROI. So my point here is you're able to use some additional data points to say, not only am I looking at a horse that I think can be in the race, but also can finish, but also at that average uh, mile per hour running speed can really be a horse that, that, that can be, uh, can be a, a key, albeit short price. Doesn't matter to me. That's a horse I want to look to try to build off of. The next generation type stats that you're mentioning are fascinating. And once we get through the Breeders' Cup, we're going to do a whole series of shows where we look at horse racing, conventional wisdom through uh, the race lens, as it were. But another thing I want to do is talk about some of those newer fangled stats and how we might use them to get an edge as we continue on here, Matt. Yeah, and that's the idea. Like to, today is to kind of give you just an idea, idea of different things that you can use, especially if you're checking this out for the first time and you want to use it to try to help uh, your your Breeders' Cup Friday and Saturday. These are some of the areas that I would start with, right? Start to, start to take a look at the idea of how the track's playing, but more importantly, getting an idea of where things are. And I think that that GPS tab is something that's new that's been added. I think it's been really interesting. Just scratching the surface of it there, but I think it's something that's interesting, especially when you're combining pace and you're looking at the field as a whole can give you, can give you, give you some additional edges there, I think, uh, when you look at it. I totally agree. Where shall we head from here? So let's take a look at, um, you know, I'm going to look at a race here. Um, I'm going to jump to race 11. And I want to give you an idea of what I mean by an angle where you can look at some progression, right? And what I think is important here is like, for instance, if I, if I look at elite power here and yeah, I, I take a look at one of the angles that we have is uh, looking at pace going six furlongs, right? So when you're looking at it from a from a dirt sprint perspective, right? So you look at late pace going six furlongs, highlighted in green here as a positive, right? I want to take a look at that a little bit deeper, right? Because my first thought is early pace is going to hold, right? And, and it's something I want to play that 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 early speed. Now it certainly has been if you look at it over the year, but what has it done? You can do a progression of this, right? So this is what I mean by a progression. You can take a look to see is it trending in the right direction? Is it trending in the other direction? And as you continue to go further and further the last six months, over the last month, over the last couple of weeks, right? You start to notice this trend going in the other direction, right? So that's something that I want to take note of because, again, I just step back and think more kind of on the game theory side of things with the basic statistics that's in, in, in the program showing a more broader stat might be a, a draw to say, you know what, this horse is going to come from off of it. They've done extremely well here. I'm going to start to look at those horses more where it's actually trending in the other direction, right? So if I go back to it and take a look, okay, let's take a look at horses that are projected to be on the lead. So again, I'm just using this as, as an example. So the top early pace here. The same idea, right? Take a look. What has it done in, in a broader sense? And what has it done when you look at it from a, a, a progression, right? So same idea over the last year. You could then just easily, just by easily clicking last six months, right? Starting to get better over the last month, starting to get better the last two weeks. 
is starting to get better, right? So you see that ROI, the win percentage starting to go up again. So again, is it going to formulate all of my decisions? No, but I think that's, again, another easy way from just a few different clicks, you can get a really nice perspective on a statistical basis to see how yep. this angle has worked, not only in the past, but how it's worked coming up in, in, in the future. And I love the different ways that you can look at it. I mean, just to use an obvious, but you know, big picture example, the Santa Anita track of 2019 doesn't really have a lot to do with the Santa Anita track of now in terms of how just different it is in terms of final times, et cetera. So like the idea that you'd want to filter for, you know, the more recent version of the track makes sense. But then the other piece of it just reminds me of in a book we've talked about so many times, but, you know, modern pace handicapping and Tom Prohammer's ideas about, you know, track profiles and, and the way that they can, you know, seemingly just, just go through these waves where it's playing one way and then playing another. And this gives you a lot of different ways to take a cut and, uh, and take a look and inform your, your overall opinion of what's going on out there. And as we know, as horse players, you know, you make a lot of your best decisions when you feel in tune with the track. And these are the kinds of tools that can really help you get in tune, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And again, when you're taking some of these broader approaches, this is, I'll start very broad, but then I can click on the details tab here. I think this is probably one of the most interesting parts of Racelands as a whole, because again, with a simple click, I can see every single race that falls into this cat. Now there's only seven here, but when you're getting a broader one, you can look through a bunch of different races, but I can toggle by odds, by finish, by jockey, sire, damn trainer. I, I can go through it all and make simple, just, you know, again, looking at any consistencies, anything sticking out, right? And then on the highlighted date, if you were to click on this, it brings you directly to the Equibase sheet. So it gives you all the information of the race, gives you the running lines, gives you everything right there. So that's how I progress into using this from a broad scale and then start to build some very specific angles where I'm starting to see trends or just additional things that I want to look at, post position, connections, jockey on, jockey off, that kind of thing, specifically to a specific distance, to a track. So again, the world is kind of endless. Once you start to go in that direction, you can really start to find some interesting stuff here. Again, just by a simple click, those details come up and you can go to the go to the individual charts on Equibase. We got just over 10 minutes left here, Matt. I want to drill down on some more specifics about this year's Breeders' Cup. If you want to pick and choose a couple of the things you found that you think might be of the most interest to our viewers and listeners. Yeah, one thing I'll, I'll throw out again, just sticking with the, the turf sprints for a bit, I'll, I'll throw this stat that, that came up on here. Um, if you look at turf sprints at Santa Anita, first time in North America, right? So your shippers coming from, from overseas over the last year, 23 races, no winners, just 9% of them have hit the board. Uh, so again, uh, an offer there when it comes to, when it comes to those shippers coming in over the last year, um, if you're looking at, you know, uh, on, on a graded stake perspective, again, seven of those races have been graded stakes, um, zero winners on, on that angle, uh, as well. So again, the broad stats doesn't tell the whole story, but again, that's food for thought. If you're looking at a really short price in any of these races and you're seeing, an, you know, a shipper coming from overseas, that's something that does stick out with me a little bit uh, to make. Not going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to be easy and maybe really favors the tactics of the connections of live in the dream who at least have that experience dealing with the different kind of gate speed that we have here. So uh, that, you know, I, I feel like that's informative I'm not saying they can't win, but, you know, maybe at a big price, not ones that you want to be uh, trusting in the face of that stat, which is just backed up by logic, given how different speed is here, as we saw with with the live in the dreams first start um, of the European sprinters that would be the one I would be the most interested in I think if only because of having that experience here and that stat speaks to that where else can we go so we'll finish up taking a look at uh look at race number four the uh the, the Philly mare turf uh mile and a quarter looking at some of these longer distance uh turf routes at, at Santa Anita and again looking at it from from a pace perspective right because I think we're going to have an interesting you know, discussion at least when you get this, especially if you're if you're looking at in Italian as as potentially being one of the plays uh, that you want to make. So if you looked at this, and again, I, I looked at, you can get a, even more specific here. So you can do a projected on the lead, or you can actually run an angle that looks back at races where horses were were first at first call, 
right? So you can actually pull that from the chart and say, okay, I, I want to see not the horses that were projected, but I want to see the ones that were actually on the lead at first call. How do they do in the in these types of races, especially looking at, at, at a mile and a quarter? And again, if you look at, at, again, at this distance on the lead at first call out of 14 races over the last year, not a single winner and 20% of them hitting, hitting the board. So again, that early pace and these types of races here, maybe want to give you a you know, uh, at least a pause to think about. And I, if I'll, co I'll collect these together. If you look at a mile and a quarter and a mile and a half, um, if you look at it from the opposite side of things on, on a top late pace perspective, 40% winners with a positive 39% ROI. So again, just giving you a basic idea of that early pace and, and late pace when it comes to these, to these distances here. Um, and then I, I also thought it was interesting too, if you look at it from a post position, post position standpoint, so one to three, what I would call, yeah, I do it on the rail. Then I also do one post one and three on, on the inside there. Uh, again, just out of 47 races, um, you know, 11% winners with a negative 39% ROI. So I'm not trying to talk you off at, at, at any horses there, but again, this is where I like to bring in the broader data tell me a story and then I'll use the qualitative side of handicapping to figure it out whether I'm going to believe it or not. Right. But again, to kind of tie all this together, I think using all of the data that that Equibase has through race lens to make it as simple and easy as possible to be able to click through like that and then use your qualitative handicapping on top of it. I think it's, it's an invaluable tool and I've been using it ever, ever since uh, race lens uh, came out. I've, I've, I'm developing a little, pet hypothesis while you're talking and sharing those stats about inside and speed, maybe not being the things you want on the mile and a quarter, mile and a half. So what's unique about those races here, um, they start down a hill, right? And I think a lot of us, and you know, certainly thinking back today at the spa and thinking of an Italian here, have said, well, mile and a quarter, but down the hill, maybe it's a, you know, more of a cheater's mile and a quarter. Maybe it does enable a horse uh, that's really more of a, of a miler to go further. But the, the, the numbers tell a different story, and, and perhaps it's a case that's just, again, just popped in my head. Maybe because they start downhill, they actually go too fast in, in, a, in a lot of uh, general instances, and it works the opposite. And if that's the case, you know, bad news for an Italian and maybe good news for a horse like uh, for a horse like Warm Heart, who I you know think was on the uh, has a chance to, for this to maybe be too sharp. But on the data, uh, uh, maybe not. Or maybe it's just going to be in Spiral, who, who, who sits in the, in the perfect place and, uh, and gets the job done in a race like the Philly and Mare Turf. But that's, no, that's fascinating. And I love it when what, what I like about the Race Lens tool and all the work we've done together, Matt, is that it, it surprises you enough times that you know it's worth something like that example. And then it also, it doesn't surprise you all the time. I mean, it confirms a lot of logical things in a way that just, it just feels like you're getting the, the, you know, the straight data scoop. And that's not the end game for players like you and me, who are also very well versed in the fundamentals of handicapping, but it does help inform those perspectives. So we got a couple minutes left still, Matt. One thing, I know I'll be accused of a host fail if I don't bother you on what some of your early Breeders' Cup opinions specifically might be, but we can also take a look at another uh, angle or two that you've pulled. I mean, certainly post positions are interesting in these big fields. I don't know if you have anything about that, but, you know, just generally speaking, would love to uh you know get more of your thoughts on the breeders cup um i would say not so much in terms of the um you know the the final opinions at this point kind of still putting that together that's something that i've done now for probably the last five or six years is trying to stay away from the early you know uh you know early deep dive in, into some this of is my all-in horse yeah knowing you're all in yeah, horse at the free yeah. entry stage yeah. <laughs> I feel on both sides of it where I felt like a lot of the other data stuff that I do, like my own modeling, it's I try to get ahead of things to try to bring in data. Then I wind up having to unwind a lot of it because it doesn't it doesn't work and I got to pull it back out again. There's that side of it. But then you're right. There's also getting glued onto a particular horse. And, and, and the more you kind of look, the more you think that that's my horse I'm going to use. You know, one thing I've said before is that's how you sometimes you, you turn smart into stubborn. Right. You think you're 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 on to something you're, you want to use, you want to use it. And as you go along, you know, deep, deep in your head or even some of the, the, the numbers that you're seeing as you run through some of these statistics here is telling you a different story. You become stubborn and say, well, no, I'm still going to stay there. I'm still going to use it. Right. So to me, I like to try to keep that off as much as as much as possible. Well, how about this then? Production meeting in the middle of the show in classic uh, in the money fashion. 
why don't we, if you're willing to do this and you could beg off, and, but uh, what if we have you join our picks grid that we're going to be sending out for our, all of our In The Money Plus listeners to bring it back to In The Money Plus, where, of course, you get this great um, promotion that's going right now, where you get the heavily discounted Raceland subscription for a year and the In The Money Plus. Would you give us, a, at that stage, maybe we could, we could have a, a top three for you, understanding that a top three picks isn't exactly the same as how you might bet in a contest like the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge. There's a lot more strategy and game theory as far as that goes. We have a whole other video, actually, uh, about that one. Um, but is that something you might be willing to do for us? Yeah, well, the first answer to that is yes, I absolutely. Will would love to join the uh, the picks grid. And number two, you let me, you let me off very easy uh, on that, Pete. So I use the uh, I use the time constraint <laughs> to my uh, to my advantage there. Um, but again, it's still still a lot more a lot more to look at for me, kind of bringing in as much as I possibly can. These races are so difficult, but it was it, it's why it's the best uh, weekend in in U.S. racing is because there's so much opportunity. Um, I think pricing is as at its as at its best. And if you're playing in the Breeders' Cup betting challenge, I think it's the best contest to play. So there's there's so much that's that's you know a, a, a definite uh, definite play every single year is Breeders' Cup because of all those reasons. Couple of more notes. So again, you can access that offer the easiest way is in the money uh, slash race lens. That'll take you right to the Echo Ace page with all the details on the offer and give you a chance to sign up for it. And the other thing I want to mention, you know, we got this up on YouTube and we're going to be doing this series coming up um, after Breeders' Cup where we look at conventional wisdom and test things like the kinds of questions we've been talking about on the show. And why don't people put in the comments things they want us to test? You know, how hard is it for a first time starter breaking from the rail? How much of a disadvantage is it first time against winners? How does that change when you're dealing with a restricted claimer first winner's race versus, you know, a maiden special weight going to an open allowance? Things like this, I really want to look at. And I think we're going to have some fun discussions. And, you know, with Matt's knowledge and with the power of this tool, Race Lens, I don't think we're going to be able to help but learn something as far as that goes. So, uh, yeah, that's that was another couple of programming notes I wanted to get in there. We're down to just our, our last couple of minutes why don't you let me let us know a little bit about your process? So obviously you've described the first part of it with the way you use race lens to sort of inform you about different uh, different trends, et cetera. What what happens next in your handicapping process? Well, the next part is is to to see if anything jumps out, right? So whether it's Breeders' Cup or whether it's kind of an everyday, I look at where the numbers are telling me some opportunities are. And then I'll start to look at those races first, right? So I like to say, you know, collapse in, react out. Right? So I collapse in on some races where I like certain horses or certain things are coming out to me. And if those horses fit and I'm really onto those horses, then I start to react out and look, where where does that race fall, right? Is it in the pick six, pick, pick five? You know, looking at a strong double play or something like that. So it starts to inform me a little bit better of how I want to play the day, which is totally opposite of what I used to do. If you go back to early 20s, Matt, it was... I'd wake up and say, I'm playing the pick five today at Belmont, right? Where over the years I've learned that's not, that's not how you should do it, right? To take, take in my process, which is I look at the race lens home screen. I filter it by angles. I look to see which ones I like the most and where they pop up across the country. I look at my own model, right? There's certain things that I look for that jump out to me. And then there's the qualitative side of it, right? Then you start to use the qualitative side of handicapping and, and, and looking through form and that, and that thing, that sort of thing. So that's kind of the process, right? I go data first into the qualitative side, but then I put the most time on the back end to build wagers, right? So for me all day Thursday, that's all I'm going to do is look at strategy to build wagers, to get to a certain point in the Breeders' Cup batting challenge, build wagers for multi races that I like and to make sure I've got that, all set and 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 done and done correctly. So the wagering side to me is, is has become even more so than than the handicapping side. You hit on something that uh, that I think is very important, which is that idea of you know rather than you know let, letting the races guide you to which ones to play as opposed to the other way around. And one thing that's wonderful is the angles that populate within race lens. We didn't, you could see that on the screen before. We didn't really talk about it until this little bit here at the end, but that's a great thing because you can customize your own. And then there are also sort of pre-populated ones that will point you to potentially profitable or unprofitable angles over time and can really help give you a guiding hand. You don't, you're not starting from scratch either. You have those pre-populated angles to sort of get you started. And as you go and you do this work, it's not like you 
you have to reinvent the wheel every time. They just pop up and you could see them. Maybe I should have pointed out when we were looking at the screen, but you can see those, the, the, the green and red angles um, potentially pointing you in, in a direction there. And it's all part of the, the power of the tool. Once again, uh, you can get all of the grid picks, the whole In The Money team, including Matt Vagvolgi, as part of our In The Money Plus package. In the moneypodcast.com slash plus is the place to check that out. But I recommend take a shot with race lens. Try it out. I mean, for a couple hundred bucks, this is something you could use for a year, really have an opportunity to get familiar with, and you'll get you know, the entire In The Money Plus for the year, which I think is probably worth the, the price you're getting for the data. So it's a great two-in-one opportunity here. In the moneypodcast.com slash race lens, the place to check it out. And if you've got questions, Matt, I mean, that's something I know you've done in the past too, uh, is, is to be able to answer, you're willing to answer people's questions as they're getting familiar with the program and, and the team over at Equibase, Ella Star also willing to do that type of work. So you're not starting on an island here. This is something where you can have the tools and then the talent behind the tools to help you get going and make this an integral part of your handicapping arsenal. Matt, we're out of time unless you've got a closing thought for us. A couple quick closing thoughts. Number one, I am behind a little bit. A lot of folks have reached out via Twitter. Uh, I am not on Twitter as much as I used to. It's actually pretty scarce, but I promise I will be back on Twitter on a regular basis answering a lot of those questions. Cause I do love, I do love the questions that come in. So if you're, if you're, if you're listening out there, watching out there, and if I haven't gotten back to you, I will get back to you before the Breeders' Cup this week. And the second part is if this interests you, th what we're going to do, what Pete and I are going to do uh, with this show going forward is to really dive into it and show you how to do this, right? So this is more to give you an idea of what kind of power this has, what got me interested in it, how I started to figure out how to use it. But more importantly, we will go very detailed, literally showing you how to select, how to build read the charts, and then try to go through more of the philosophy behind of how it works into the overall uh, execution of, of, of betting. So I want to make that point. That if, you're, if this is something that's piquing your interest, you want to make sure that uh, that you stick around for after Breeders' Cup and we get these shows rolling. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll be here to help. And again, if you have any specific things you want us to explore and demo during those shows, let us know in the comments on YouTube or let us know who you think is going to win these 14 championship races this weekend. Matt, I thank you again for your time today. Our partners at Racelands, especially uh, Rhonda, really appreciate all of her support for Racelands and In The Money Media. I'm Peter Thomas Fornatal. May you win all your photos. <laughs> <laughs>